So you're, you're saying I can't? I, I have to stop bringing in fake news. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Because now I'm going to get called you're out. You're going to have a it. fact checker now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this week on Backward Compatible, Jim, Doc, and Chris welcome our newest crew member, Eric Brody, with a discussion about the future of the podcast and recent trends in gaming. Plus, Bluebird of Happiness and a round of Buy, Try, or Trash. The BackwardCompatible.com podcast starts right now. Hello, Backward Compatible listeners. Welcome to episode 126 of the Backward-Compatible.com podcast. Games and new media with a splash of academia. As always, I'm Chris. I'm joined today by Jim. Hey, everybody. And we're joined by Doc. Hello, hello. And we're joined for the first time officially by our newest full member of the podcast, Eric. Hello, for the first time again. (laughs) When did you get here? I just snuck in, snuck in the back door. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Mike was already set up. <laughs> Go figure. What a coincidence. We just had an extra mic available. <laughs> just, right. It just so happened, you know? Um, yeah, so those of you who have uh, followed the podcast have heard Eric before. Uh, he's joined us for a number of episodes. I think actually during episode 100, we were listing our most frequent guests. And I think you were at the top of the top of the yeah, list. Yeah, that was a very proud moment for me. <laughs> um, and so I guess it's just the way things work on the podcast. You guessed enough times to eventually bring you on. So um, <laughs> that's that's how it's been working so that far. That is a threat, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steer clear. Um, so I guess now we need to start counting who's who's next. Yeah, I think uh, I think Will would be up yeah, next Will Parsons, at this yes. rate. So. We're after you. Yeah. <laughs> He's already kind of unofficially like a crew member for um, Roll With It. Yeah, I would for say. sure. With but, Roll With It, yeah. Yeah, uh, I would say so. He's one of the better GMs we know. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, as as Chris said, uh, my name is Eric Brody. Um, I uh, have been a longtime listener to the podcast and a longtime friend, actually, now. <laughs> like, enough time has gone by. Um, and uh, so as far as what I actually do, I am a... Uh, game producer and uh, kind of digital marketer as well. I work for a studio that I co-founded uh, that's here in Dallas called Poly Night Games. Um, we uh, launched our first title back in January. I know actually Chris mentioned it during like the anticipated games of the year because it was like either coming out that week or the week after that. So um, so now I've done that now kind of doing the indie thing and um, I'm kind of branching out a little bit as well myself and kind of starting to uh, talk to other people about like flexing my marketing skills again and kind of do a little bit of that as the rest of the devs are kind of going back into their dev caves and working on that. Um, And so that gives me opportunity to do things like this again. Um, As far as uh, joining the podcast, uh, I kind of talked to you guys about it a little bit before we started recording, but now to have it officially, uh, I wanted to thank you guys for having me come on. Um, I'm really excited. I've, I've always enjoyed obviously talking to you guys about Thing, you know, these types of topics and particularly your particular approach to these topics. Uh, but then also um, as a listener, as I always do with every podcast, I always also have an opinion on them. And and I and I am really excited to. Um, so both for me personally joining the podcast and then for, I think for the fans, for everybody that is listening as well, what I think I could bring. Um, I think that uh, for me personally, what's fun about this is it because of the approach that we have. And I, I like talking about games on an academic level as well, not necessarily just simply like here's why things are fun, but like, let's actually dissect why they're fun. Um, it's going to feel a little bit like back in college again. Um, and I think that a part of it is because of those are the topics that we have, but then also like, it's not an accident that Chris, you were TA in one of my classes mm-hmm. and doc, I took a couple classes with you. Indeed you did. Yeah. So, um, so there's that element. And then I think that from kind of a broader perspective for the podcast itself, um, I'm excited to bring uh, a little bit of a different voice. We are kind of talking about, uh, kind of some of the, 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 roles that you guys kind of have um, in it and uh, not to put myself in a corner or anything like that or say this is this is what I'm going to be doing or anything but uh, kind of the way that I like to approach any topic is uh, from what you would call the critical perspective quote unquote in that uh, I'm a really big fan of looking at all sides um, and I I typically get an opinion on it but then 
I have a reason for why I have that opinion. Mm. And I'm always, I am always just one really good fact away from changing my opinion. <laughs> um, and so uh, a lot of times I'll sometimes have opinions on games that are a little bit more contrarian to like kind of what the masses think. And that's totally fine because not necessarily that I'm contrarian, but like, because I think way too deeply on a lot of these things. Um, and so I'm just excited to kind of bring some of that to the, to the team. Awesome. Cool. We're excited to have you for sure. Yeah. Thank you. And you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all very excited to, to have you on the show. Um, I know when, when it was talked about and pitched, we were, you know, out to lunch and Chris was bringing up the idea and metaphorically, uh, no, Doc, literally, we were literally, <laughs> literally out to lunch. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> Doc was, you know, immediately on board. We were talking very quickly and I was just standing there. I was or sitting there rather really confused because I misheard. It was a loud restaurant and I misheard Chris and I thought he was saying roadie. And I was I, in my head, I was picturing this person. I had this whole mental image of who this person Rody could be. I was picturing he was he was like, you know, six, 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 seven, dressed in flannel, full beard. And I'm just like, who is this person? And you were both like, come on, Rody, you know, we've, we've had him on the show. He's a great guy. And I, and I was like, well, maybe we should just have him on and, you know, try out or something. And, you know, not I wasn't really serious, though. I was like, I don't know about this. Sounds kind of weird. And it took me a while. And then finally, I forget, I, I think I just straight up asked, okay, I don't know who you're talking about because I was going along with it for a while. <laughs> I was just getting too embarrassed. So at a certain point, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ask. I'm just going to out myself. I don't know who you're talking about. Who are you talking about? And then Chris says, you know, Eric. <laughs> And I go, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so it took me a little bit. Then I was on board. Right. Um, so. Cool. <laughs> so you were that close to You're not making close. it. <laughs> Though, like, uh, the, the kind of hipster that you kind of created in your mind, uh, I often consider myself an accidental hipster. So uh, well, I might go. bring some of that voice anyway. Cool. Great. Great. I want to see you with the big beard. That <laughs> If I could grow it, all I can get is just a little bit of a chin. Oh, That's pretty I much it. That. I yeah. It's time for Game Show, where the backward compatible crew play a game show kind of game on their gaming show. What sort of crazy game show challenges in store this week on Game Show? Let's find out right now on Game Show. We are going to move on to uh, Game Show, and uh, we're going to start with a game of Buy, Try, Trash, and specifically targeting you, Eric, because we kind of want to see or rather give the audience an insight on who you are and what kind of games you like. Cool. And part of that is to give you difficult decisions to make. Right. right. So I'm going to buy Chris. I'm going to try <laughs> Eric. And oh, I'm going to trash Jim. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that's the way it's going to go. That's fine. <laughs> is, that, um, is that how this game is no, played? No, no. Oh. We're, we're going to actually talk about games. And, oh, okay. uh, right. It's a, it's a gaming show. Right. So uh, um, Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the idea is that I'm going to present you with uh, three games. And you're going to tell me which one you want to buy, which is you get to own the game, play it as much as you want, and beat it, uh, if you choose to. Try, which is you only get to play it for, what would you normally say, like an hour? It's kind of like a demo. You're demoing the experience. Yeah, about an hour. You yeah. get to experience it. You get to be, you're probably going to play enough to at least have maybe, maybe an opinion on it. I mean, if it's a huge game, maybe not a very good one, but mm. you'll be able to at least experience a little bit of it. And then Trash is not only do you not get to play this game, it's like it doesn't exist. It's just gone, right? Okay, you so, can never play it. So I know there's been various like versions of this in the past. Yes. So do other people still know of it and play it? It's just I know I will never be able to touch it. Or that, that's a good point. And it's I, literally just written out of history. So in, in this in this particular circumstance, any game that you trash is henceforth completely like there's a somehow a gaming consensus that it is the best video game of all time <laughs> of its type and so you are missing out okay. and everyone is constantly telling you to play this game and somehow you just can't like you just have this compulsion you just cannot play it yeah and it just it eats you up inside it might okay. drive you insane okay, we'll, we'll see good. meanwhile my head has always been because we started doing this originally for games that uh hadn't come out yet yeah mm. and so right, it was right. essentially buy sense. try or yeah. cancel and so you're right. canceling the project and, it will never yes. be released and, and we might i might actually do that i think i will for i'll do a couple of couple of rounds of this with you and one yeah. of those will actually be for a game that hasn't come out yet okay um and then it'll also include games that uh, the first one will be for game uh, games that are already out which i believe you have played okay we're gonna start off with i know you're a big jrpg fan mm -hmm. so i'm actually gonna name out some of um some classic jrpgs that i will assume that you've played this is also kind of a test because if you haven't played this game <laughs> i want to actually have to ask you to leave okay cool. so all right so be ready Oof. all right <laughs> past eric i hope that you did me well <laughs> <laughs> okay so buy try or trash are you ready here so. we go here here are the three games number one final fantasy 7 okay number two 
Final Fantasy VI. Okay. Number three, Chrono Trigger. Okay, interesting. Um, man. So okay. essentially, if you trash one of these games, your memories of that game <laughs> no longer exist. Yeah. The good um, thing is that all these games are already known from other people as being some one of the some of the best games of all time. Yeah. So that part has already actually happened. It's like paycheck. They go in and they delete the, <laughs> right. the brain cells. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. You get oh, to be man. in a bad Ben Affleck movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where I'm where I'm coming on some of this is because like all three of these are either very like some of the best JRPGs ever made or um have had really uh, important, like impactful elements to them mm -hmm. that have shifted a lot of like kind of Im impressions that people have on games. And like, it's, it's, it's been big and important on the culture. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like some of those elements I can still kind of appreciate, even if I hadn't played it now as a caveat, will I have been able to watch any, like, do, can I still at least know the story of some of these games, would I be able to watch like cutscenes from some of these no. games? No. no. Okay. No. Okay. Cool. Then in, that then in, that in does fact, define some of these. For in me. fact, if you've ever seen the show Black Mirror, right. where they have that episode where anything that that they don't want you to see becomes censored, it's like blurred out, and you uh -huh. hear you hear noise. Okay. That's what happens when you watch this if you trash the game. Got it. Okay. So as the person who literally has a wall scroll of Eris behind my bed, <laughs> I will go ahead and say that uh, the buy would have to be Final Fantasy VII. Um, even though, ironically, I feel that it's actually kind of the weakest of those three. Hmm. Um, and I think that a part of that is because of what we were talking about, the the impact that, that had on especially the Western market for RPGs and JRPGs. It introduced a lot of people to JRPGs, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't get to play 7 until a little bit later, until I had a PS2, because I didn't have a PS1. Uh, but I had friends who did, and I was able to kind of get introduced to 7 and 8 and 9 through them. Hmm. Um, and that opened up that entire world for me. And so by not being able to have seven in my history, that completely changes the person I am, the type of games that I enjoy, and some of the most impactful moments for me as a player and as a game player and a game fan. So seven would definitely be the buy. Um, I feel that Chrono Trigger would need to be the try. Um, and the reason is on one element, uh, what it does from a game design perspective and what it did for JRPGs um, as, with its particular combat system is super interesting. And I think actually still today still feels fresh in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, even fan, like friends of mine who aren't really that into JRPGs, I can still hand it to them and they still enjoy it. Um, and some of the things that it did, like storytelling wise with... Uh, um, it's a, it, it utilizes uh, various endings uh, and multiple endings the way mm -hmm. that a lot of JRPGs do, but um, in ways that can be controlled almost like later on in history, like like VNs in really cool ways, too. Um, and so then that would allow me to at least still kind of learn about what Chrono Trigger did that was interesting and important. Um, so Chrono Trigger would probably be the try. And then, unfortunately for me, what I actually think is the best of all of the Final Fantasy series, <laughs> six would actually be the trash for me. Oh, you yeah. trash Final I Fantasy know. six. Well, I now know. we know who oh. caused the cataclysm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> World of Darkness. Yeah. yeah. Curtis, no, but, courtesy but of Eric. For what it's worth, and to, <laughs> right before they, they uh, delete it from my brain, I will say, I still think it's the best, but, but it, it is now gone for me. Okay, Chris, feel free to edit this episode. Mm -hmm. Just with the part where Eric is trashing Final Fantasy VI. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that, that was designed to have no easy answer, of yeah, course. No, so of course. those are all really highly regarded games. Some of my favorite games as well of all time. So definitely no easy answers there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you another uh, buy, try, trash. And this one, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily know for sure if these are games that you're interested in. Mm. Uh, but we'll see. These are, all, these are some of the highly anticipated games from this year that um, are yet to release. Okay. So, or... There is a caveat here is that some of these games potentially will not release uh, this year because, frankly, we can't control. <laughs> uh, we can't control necessarily what's going to happen. So uh, we'll just kind of see. Um, but OK, so here we go. So by this, this will give us some insight, especially if you, you one of these games stands out and you go, oh, I don't even want to touch that. That'll be interesting, too. Um, I might have that reaction to some of these, too. Right. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, number one, God of War. OK. Number two, Red Dead Redemption. Two. Number three, Super Smash Bros. Switch. 
Okay. Same rules apply. Now, these games haven't come out yet. Yeah. So instead of trashing the game and erasing it from your memory, this game gets permanently canceled. And okay. not only that, any other game in this series is also canceled. They will never Ooh, make another one. That, that's Ooh, harsh. Never. Actually. <laughs> never. So I want to make that clear. There isn't okay. a, oh, I'll just wait for the next one. No. There will be no <laughs> next one. No Dad of War 2? <laughs> oh man okay so no this is great and this is part of the reason that we're doing this is to let people kind of get my opinions yes, on games exactly uh so if that's really truly the case and it gets rid of an entire franchise not only am i okay with that i'm actually kind of happy oh this happens, okay so. this, i'm <laughs> spicy i'm into it now okay. putting the gloves on i don't know <laughs> here we go we're going uh yeah so the trash is a super easy one on that for me uh god of war absolutely oh. Um, just personally, not really a huge fan of the games. Um, I think that it was interesting in that it, uh, kind of introduced quick time events, um, to like games in an interesting way, I, you know, but like for me personally, um, it just never really provided much, much interest to me. Hmm. Um, I guess that the try in that case, uh, would have to be Red Dead Redemption, um, I am a huge fan of open world design, um, and the GTA games are some of my favorite games of all time. Um, I always used to say, uh, like when I was a few years ago, like I would often say, just the short answer for what's your favorite game of all time, I would just say, well, what's the most recent GTA? Let's just say that. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, I, I don't know if that's really truly the case, but you know, it was just a quick way to make that discussion. We're going to get quickly. along just yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so because of that, like obviously Red Dead Redemption um, is uh, high on my list of things that I'm excited about, um, but I feel like I've played it before. Um, you know, no matter what else they do with the game, it's, you know, being able to experience the story is going to be different, but Really, in reality, if I'm looking for that rock star open world feel, I think I can achieve that in other games. It's not like it's going to be a different city. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> different cactuses. Um, Grand Theft Horse. <laughs> uh, and so then that would definitely make the buy Smash Brothers. Um, no matter what the Smash Brothers is, if it's a remake of 4, if it's a completely new one, or if it's the rumored uh, just redoing Melee, which I know a lot of the Melee community wants. Uh, and a part of that is Smash Brothers is one of my favorite games ever. Um, I am, I'm terrible at fighting games, but I am a really big fighting game fan. Uh, mm. And I'm really a big part of like, kind of the, like mm. the community, especially like in the area and like, and Smash Brothers is, Dallas and Texas have a really big Smash Brothers like community and fan base. And um, to be able to be a part of that still, and really just, it's one of the ultimate games of being able to just pick up and play at any time. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and, and for me, it's one of my, it's one of my favorite fighting games ever. So, so I have one more and it's kind of a big one. Um, and, and so. This one's actually not going to be games, right? So this is going to be a kind of a kind of a tough one. Um, so you're going to have to put on your your best, you know, Earth B Bizarro World cap mm -hmm. to pull this one off, right? Um, buy try trash. So here's how it's going to work. Um, we're going to I'm going to actually name video game developers, right? Mm -hmm. Actual developers. Oh my! So if you buy, essentially, you have access to the library. The entire library of this company, essentially, okay. in perpetuum for all time. I'm not, no, I do, do not extrapolate that to mean that you okay. get a whole bunch of really valuable games that you can then resell. That's yeah, not no. the case. It just means that you can play those games as much as you want. You have access to them, etc. I can play them on future systems or yes. the systems won't break, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Try means you get to essentially experience all those games for a short period of time. Each, each individual game, maybe for like an hour or something like that. So you get to experience the games. You get to be very familiar with them. You don't really get to play them enough to beat them, but you have a very a strong familiarity with, with the, that company's games. Trash means that company no longer exists and has never existed, period, which could have quite a few ramifications in the game space. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, because I'm not going to be I'm not going to be picking developers that are um, not big. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hello Games is big. Sure, sure. <laughs> yes, Hello Games. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd just pick a whole bunch like that. I think Zynga, you know, Hello yeah. right. Games. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. So what happens if the one you trash would make the one that you buy not have happened? Ooh. Well, we're going to find out. Aren't we? <laughs> yeah. And as a developer, do all of those developers from that company get other jobs? That's uh, important to me. So those developers are not going to disappear. <laughs> okay. Um, at all, we're not. We're not erasing people from existence. Oh, That's horrible. This is, this is That's murder. horrible. No, I'm not talking murder. Okay. There, there was no Miyamoto. <laughs> no, no. By try murder. Um, <laughs> no, no. They still Games were a mistake. They still exist. But remember that that a lot. Some of these people, especially for for a lot of these older companies, you know, they were a product of the company they were with, the yeah. people that they knew. Um, some of them may not have the same opportunities to be in the positions that they were to become influential. Yeah. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. They might 
end up just being a cog on someone else's project as opposed to being a voice for gaming, right? Yeah. Um, so, and I'm not only going to pick old develop old publishers, by the way, old developers. I want to make that clear too. So here we go. Here are your choices, and I'm not going to make this easy on you. <laughs> uh, number one, Nintendo. You knew I had to include Nintendo. Okay. They're in there. Like all of Nintendo? Yes. Wow. Yes, all of Nintendo. Jim, I didn't know you had this in you. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Number two. I um, did. Yes, <laughs> Chris was <laughs> anticipating this. I bet. Um, number two, Rockstar. Okay. Uh, Rockstar, of course, being a lot newer than Nintendo. However, oh. however, arguably being just as influential, if you think about it. Nintendo, extremely influential, but Rockstar arguably is responsible for the uh, open world boom that mm-hmm. we're still going through. Mm-hmm. A major influence on games. So I think they're yeah. another good voice in this one. Uh, the third one. Again, I feel extremely influential. Blizzard. Wow. Okay. Okay. So these are these are all very big. I'm not. This is not necessarily a, even a commentary on which games you like better because yeah, it depends no. on how you. It depends on how you interpret the yeah. the question and what it might mean and right? what I what I care about in the industry as a whole, kind of. Exactly. Um, Nintendo. Are we including them as a hardware manufacturer? Good question. That is a great question. Um. You know what? I'm going to say that uh, they can still create hardware, but okay. none of the games that are on that hardware that are by Nintendo would have come out. And yeah, that, they that would includes, just do entirely third party stuff. Yes. Okay. That includes arcade machines as well, though. So the, okay. the Nintendo arcade games, for example, like Donkey Kong, if it's trashed, Donkey Kong does not exist, for example. Right. Okay. Um, the moment that you said it, I, I felt like it had to absolutely be the, the buy. Um, that would be Nintendo. Um, them still being a hardware manuf- hardware manufacturer did kind of change it a little bit. But honestly, um, later, I, I think that like their influence in games as a whole as a hardware manufacturer didn't really come into like Wii or like the things that they're doing in the portable space, hmm. uh, like with the Game Boy and then like especially like with the DS and things like that. Um, and so I think that games still could have existed without them. But when we talk about like Nintendo as a developer and what they have done and brought and um, to the industry, I don't think that the industry exists today almost without mm-hmm. Nintendo through the years. Um, I always feel that the uh, industry is better when Nintendo is good. Um, I, so I think that we're in a very good time right now. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, no, absolutely. Without waxing poetic on everything that we already know on them, like, yeah, absolutely. Nintendo would be the buy. Um, the try then becomes difficult, um, because I already said earlier that I'm a huge fan of open world design, mm-hmm. um, when done correctly. Um, and actually because of that caveat, I'm going to have to say that Blizzard is going to be the try. Really? Yes. <laughs> mm. And then actually, ironically, oh, as the, okay. I am a much bigger fan of more of Rockstar's catalog than I am of Blizzard's catalog. Um, but I think that Blizzard has had such a major effect on the Western design uh, game industry. Um, and just simply also, uh, especially in the PC space, right. um, and especially in the past, say, 10 years or so, mm. um, for what they've also done outside of just games themselves on uh they're two of now two of the biggest esports in the world are Blizzard properties. Um, you could also argue that Hearthstone, um, as a solo esport, is also really huge. And where would MMORPGs be today without World exactly. of Warcraft? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they there were ones before then, and I think that there were better ones that came after them, mm-hmm. but they really kind of set the blueprint for like th- what everybody else wanted to try to be. Um, or, or, and think of what they did culturally with yes. MMOs as well. Uh, what they, I mean, there's just, there and, is so much that they touched. And RTS. RTS yeah. with StarCraft and WarCraft. Um, Diablo, of course. Yeah. How many Diablo likes were there? Yeah. So, interesting pick. So, yeah. what are you trashing then? So, by I guess that means that I have to trash Rockstar. <laughs> oh, um, oh, it's got to hurt. I feel that, I, again, because of everything that Blizzard has done mm-hmm. um, with everything we just talked about, um, what Rockstar has done is they designed a type of game or really not even really, I don't, I actually don't necessarily like a lot of what has happened with open world design um, as that's becoming more and more of a trend. I think that it's being applied to too many different types of games that don't necessarily need it. And I don't actually consider it a genre anymore. I don't think that it should be. Um, It's just 
games. It's the play space and the environment that you give people. And because technology is where we are and engines are powerful enough, we can just give you bigger and bigger areas. Mm. Um, And so as crazy as it sounds, I almost feel like we would have still been able to have figured out how to do that with or without Rockstar having done it when they did. Mm. That makes sense. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So Rockstar erased from existence. Well, and so we talk about GTA <laughs> and Red Dead, but I mean, consider some of the other things that that gets rid of as well. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, the getaway, uh, mm-hmm. which is, uh, was an awesome, awesome, like heist type mm-hmm. game. Bully. Um, bully. bully. Yeah. One of my favorites. Um, Under, underappreciated. Uh, Rockstar Table Tennis, even. I mean, that game was fantastic. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like there's something else, too. Didn't they do uh, another Max racing Payne game? Max one. Payne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, L.A. Noir. I'm kidding. Somebody else would have picked that up. (laughs) And it might have been good. Yeah, maybe so. Um, Well, I guess that concludes our our segment of uh, Buy, Try, Trash. Thank you, Eric. Jim, did he make the cut? Oh, yeah, he made the cut. Okay. Okay. Now, now, welcome to the team. (laughs) Had had you trashed Chrono Trigger, though, I might have had to kick you out. This is the Mobile Minute, where we share something new or noteworthy about those computers we keep in our pants. So I've been playing some mobile games lately, uh, just kind of going through trying to find some interesting experiences. And I noticed, or I have been noticing that there's a lot more experimental um, mobile games out there more recently. So it's kind of surprised me. I've been very down on mobile games. And one that I played recently, um, in fact, just today, it's called Bluebird of Happiness. And this is actually a... Um, story-driven puzzle game, and it kind of reminds me of old point-and-click adventure games. Um, it's by uh, one developer. Um, his name is uh, Daigo Sato. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. This game is actually a. It's about your essentially you 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 are uh, two children. There's, there's two children, and you play one of them, and uh, your brother uh, goes. You go to a fair at the beginning, and your brother sort of covets this bluebird stuffed animal right just a bluebird kind of looks like a stuffed animal and um he doesn't have enough money to buy it so he steals it you as the brother go to sleep that night and you have a dream that this bluebird is actually a anthropomorphic walking talking creature and you're in this very small world in which um you have to find a way to get back home right and the game gives you a hint system a cell phone the hint system is a trick that's a very important part of the game. The way that the way that it works is that it, you, you're supposed to be able to go to it to get help if you're not sure what to do. It's a very short game. It took me about 10, 15 minutes to play all the way through. It's, a, it's like I said, a oh, puzzle wow. game. So you, you, you uh, pick up objects in the environment. You sometimes combine them to make something. For example, a, a spider web and a stick become a net so you can catch bugs. To use one example, you have to create a bunch of gems, open a chest, get a key to go down into the into the like sewer system, solve a few more puzzles, and then escape. Um, but before you can escape, the cell phone is giving you information about um, in order to find an axe, and it tells you that the only way out is to destroy the bird. If you destroy the bird, it's a trick. If you destroy the bird, um, well. I'm going to let you find that out for yourself. But uh, it's a very interesting game. It's very short. It's actually free. And the developer invites you to offer whatever you want to pay for it. He gives you some options within the game in terms of like offering him financial payback. Um, I did go ahead and, and, and um, pay for the game after I played it because I felt like it, was, it gave me enough of an experience that it warranted some price for it. Um, but yeah, check it out. It's called Bluebird of Happiness. This week's meaty topic of discussion. So as we said at the beginning of the show, uh, we've got our new crew member here and Eric, and uh, we're going to kind of take this opportunity to um, get a little bit meta. You know, we often come in, we hear with a very specific thing that we want to talk about, but today we're just going to kind of talk about um the show in general you know periodically we like to kind of reflect on you know where we've been and where we might be going um incidentally we're getting pretty close to i guess it'd be our four year anniversary um in june so um we've been at this for a little while now um and we're now yeah this is episode 126 and so we're already a quarter of a way to uh 200 (laughs) and we are almost decent at it yeah almost decent (laughs) um and of course we've also added nick to the crew recently uh you've not heard his voice on here um Super often, he tends to be more behind the scenes. Obviously, he does our music for mm-hmm. us, and he'll 
uh, join us for an occasional discussion. You've definitely heard his music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. like yeah. every episode. Every ever. episode. You, you just heard it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I guess he's probably the only one technically who's been on every single episode of the podcast uh, Ooh, of our crew. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like one of the things that I kind of want to lead in, and this is just going to be an open-ended discussion, um, uh, I was going to mention too that now that we have a growing cast, um, we're going to be able to do a little bit more uh, in terms of flexibility with who's on each show. So um, just you know, speaking for myself, I do all the editing on the cast and I um, you know, try to be here for as many shows as I can be. But every now and then uh, things get busy and I have to drop out. Mm-hmm. And so now ever since because when we started this, actually, um, you know, we were all in grad school, which is also very busy, but. It was pretty much grad school and then part time work and then this. And so it wasn't a very intrusive thing uh, as far as, you know, you know, lifestyle goes. Uh, and so for me, I'm excited to be able to potentially have the flexibility to bow out of a recording mm-hmm. session uh, now that we have enough people that someone else could sub in and we can still have a three person squad. I also think that there's some really cool stuff that can happen as far as the particular voice of each combination in sure. a way. We've already seen that actually sometimes like, you know, Jim, you and Doc have done a couple of episodes one on one. Doc and I've done a couple of one on one episodes. You and I've done one on ones. Um, and each time that happens, there's kind of a different dynamic that I think right. is kind of interesting. I, I even did a one on one with uh, Nick, yeah, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Very different. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I agree with you. I think what excites me the most is that um, and this is this is something that I, that I feel like we should be doing more of, too. Uh, we've done some codex codex entries in the past. We've transitioned, as I'm sure um, listeners have noticed, that our roundtable episodes or table for two, which is what we call it when there's only two of us able to to participate, have transitioned from being just a topic that's part of an episode to their own episode mm-hmm. as a codex mm-hmm. entry. And now that we, you know, we have Eric as well as another voice, you know, I'd like us to do more codex entries, which we did, which you did recently. Mm-hmm. You and Eric got together and you met with, um, you know, Bradley McAvoy James, who, mm-hmm. and I, I'm sure I'm butchering his name and he's going to. No, it's pretty close. <laughs> but uh, um, I didn't. He, you should be thankful that I didn't try an accent, by the way, because <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about doing it. But uh, he's he's really cool. We've had him on the show a few times. He's, he does a great voice um, for us. Uh, you know, we always pay for his trips to fly down here, <laughs> yes. yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, but you, you, you with him and you also um, worked with um, an OG, oh, a Neptune. Is his uh, yeah, his handle. Uh, his handle. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who works? Who's <laughs> on um, the Houston Outlaws, I believe, for he, Overwatch League. He works for the company that owns the Outlaws. Yeah. OK. Mm-hmm. OK. Thank you. Um, and I haven't had a chance to listen to it just yet i know we just put that out i think a couple of days ago yeah and actually the the timeline is funny because we've recorded episode 125 which we touched on overwatch league we recorded that before we did the overwatch codex uh with nabil and with bradley Uh, um but that aired before the podcast and so uh kind of like a funny little time a time shift there so for anyone who's wondering um we talked about Overwatch on the podcast before we talked about it in the Codex, um, if that colors your interpretation of <laughs> uh, various points and opinions. Um, but I love that because that's a game where, like, you know, Overwatch in particular um, is a game I'm not really, I never really have been as, inter- as interested in. I mean, I've kind of seen a few people play playing it. I've actually never even played it. And I don't know if Doc is really all that interested in it as well. That will scare me. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, but Chris, I know you're, you're a big Overwatch player and mm-hmm. you've, you've talked about it before. And Eric, you know, you're also involved in the um, Overwatch League and esports mm-hmm. as well and, and taking an interest in it like Chris has. So it's great that y'all could, for example, come together, talk about it. And instead of it being a table for two, we're going to talk about just this one game. You mm-hmm. kind of turned it into a larger codex and you invited a couple of other guests to mm-hmm. discuss it. We certainly wouldn't want to try to do a show with six people. No, absolutely. Nor would I feel <laughs> comfortable, on, you know, on a show as a codex about a game that I haven't played. And I say that actually that's a lie. I would feel perfectly comfortable. I would just sound like, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> which is par for the course. So I, I did that for you. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> um, and actually, no, and you'll, you'll notice when you listen to that, that, um, you know, I, I definitely took a back seat. Um, I sort of chimed in a couple of times, but then let our guests run with it. And yeah. um, Nabil in particular had uh, great, great insights because he's got experience in shout casting and in esports. Cool. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely excited about the prospect of having more um, kind of, Topics that aren't our typical discussion that we typically have on the right. podcast. Um, I'm also intrigued by the idea of doing more um, solo things. Uh, we we early on kind of adapted a few of our works into audio essays. Uh, for example, I did one or two um, articles I wrote for the original version of the site back when we were doing blogs um, that I turned into an audio essay. Doc yes, did a chapter yes. from uh, um, a chapter that he wrote for a book. Yep. 
Um, so doing some more things like that where just one of us can hop in front of a mic or maybe um, have a little quick call with someone online that we want to chat with about something and just put those up as uh, uh, more content. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, too. And I feel like it also gives us the opportunity or more opportunity to do a gaming focus, like a one game focused, I should say, um, codex entry as well, yeah. like like a whether it's a round table, if there's like three of us or more that want to get involved or whether it's a table table for two, the fact that we have an extra person is more it's a little bit easier to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I've also kind of picked up. Um, obviously not just today, but um, the times that you've come that that we have some similar interests mm -hmm. as well, Eric. Uh, I know that, for example, you when it comes to Overwatch and esports, that's something that more Chris is interested in, and you're also interested in as well. But um, I'm interested as well in a JRPG, so that could easily be like a like a, a roundtable topic for us three because mm -hmm. I know we're we're into those mm -hmm. sort of games. Um, classic codex and codex entries or things like that would be pretty pretty interesting too for some older. Um, role playing experiences, um, and then also different series. I mean, even before we started the show, we were talking about concepts for um, other gaming series. Like we have our transitional period in gaming um, series that we're doing, in which we started out with Crazy Taxi, which I feel is really interesting. We have more possibilities for something like that because we have an extra voice that could play some of those games, and um, we could even have some of those series. I'm not saying we necessarily need to do it this way but some of them could be codex entries if we wanted to for depending on what the series is um especially when it's something like um for our kind of you know sister podcast as mm -hmm. well with a uh, role with it mm -hmm. it gives us more experience there too where we have the possibility to bring in an extra person or have a possibly um, more more recordings if not all of us can make it there's always like a few people that can come in and mm -hmm. make some of those shows uh particularly for it unplugged we don't have to have all of the um the work that goes into the, you know, the post-processing that mm -hmm. I know um, you and Nick mm -hmm. do. I know it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So the unplugs are also a good opportunity for that too. So I feel like, yeah, it gives us the opportunity to have a lot of varied, more varied content, I think. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Roll With It, some really exciting stuff coming up with that um, that we don't know, we don't know announce just yet. Obviously, season four um, is still in the works. Um, scoring is taking a little bit longer than expected, but it's underway. <sighs> Um, so first episode will hopefully be coming out sometime in the next few weeks. It's hard to say. It's hard to give a, a specific date um, just because, as I sort of already alluded to, we're doing this all in our free time. <laughs> so pretend like we didn't say that about season three like a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I also feel that um, speaking of roll with it, I'm just going to throw this out there because we're we're talking. Um, I'd love to do, uh, you know, be a GM on a, a next season of Roll With It, mm -hmm. if, if possible, or, or an upcoming season, I should say, not uh, upcoming, necessarily next, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Because we, we've got plans for the next one. Sure, I'm, I'm very sure. excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd love to get involved in that too and play. Um, I'd kind of honestly, I'd kind of like to try playing um, maybe some more traditional systems, um, particularly since I'm more interested in sort of trying out some of these like older, for example, old Dungeons and Dragons is something I've been researching lately. She might talk a little bit in next week's show. But uh, I'd love to try, you know, just running some like, you know, old D&D &D or something just kind of together in like a shorter session and um, not some massive campaign, but something that might last, say, you know, a couple of hours total, split mm -hmm. that up into a show, kind of see where that, where we fall on that spectrum, um, especially since we tend to do a lot of um, newer or more experimental systems or sometimes our own, which is always very interesting, but it puts us in a different kind of a different spin on it mm -hmm. if it's a system that people are more familiar with or that has been um, so influential to other systems, including the ones that we've played before. Yeah, there are lots of different actual play podcasts that cover lots of different systems, but our style has not been kind of the more crunchy. Let's play D&D &D and have lots of rolling and that sort of thing, um, but definitely as like an unplugged or something like that. It'd be interesting to apply our our spin our right. approach to well, something like that that's why i want to do old D, D because everything that i've read about i've actually not played mm -hmm. old D, D, to be honest with you but I'm t when i say that I'm, I'm referring to um not advanced but basically anything before D, &D version three mm -hmm. but not advanced because they split off into advanced D, &D and regular and the regular basic yeah, D &D yeah. basic so i just mean D, D basic but i never actually played that system i only mm. played advanced D, D and then three and onward so from what i have read though there's actually a lot less rolling than you think 
Oh yeah, well, there is. I've, so, I've actually played um, like old Red Box. Okay, so you, so, you don't talk about. So there's actually not as many roles as mm-hmm. you might be thinking there. Mm-hmm. Are. Yeah, what, it's a very different approach though. Like it's, it, a, lot, oh, it's totally. a lot more. That's why um, I want to do it. Yeah, that's why I want to do it for that mm-hmm. exact reason, just mm-hmm. to have that different approach. Well, and one of the things that I um, heard about, like supposedly the way that original original was mm-hmm. played, uh, was that literally the players actually did no rolling. Um, and it was actually the and they actually didn't even have character sheets in front of them. Um, in which it was really truly the DM doing all the storytelling and the players then just simply one of the things that we were actually talking about before the show was like kind of some of the uh restrictions that you sometimes feel by how detailed the character sheets can get in like right. kind of later D and D. And so when you don't have that in front of you, the players can just simply say this character, my character does this thing. Mm-hmm. And then the DM has to figure out either if that's possible or how it happens and everything truly happens then behind the scenes and exactly. they do everything. I think that's a really cool different take on the storytelling, both for, for mm-hmm. both sides. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and I almost feel like, um, in a sense, it's almost come full circle, the role playing space, because mm-hmm. it sort of started in that more narrative and more free area. And then it became so much more rules heavy. And then now with a lot of the modern ones, it's become more open and abstract, although in a different way, more towards the narrative side and more towards telling a story than, say, running through a dungeon. Mm-hmm. But right. still, you have that kind of full circle of it's become more abstract. Yeah. And a lot of times the GM doesn't roll anything at all. Yeah. True. I'm thinking of like Blades in the Dark. That's another one I actually want to try. Yeah, it's really I'd, good. I'd love to try that. Yeah, we're yeah. enjoying it. I'm running, uh, running a little campaign for a little bit of testing, and we've been enjoying it immensely. But yeah, more more opportunities for codex entries and roll with it, I think, is something that I'm, I'm excited yeah, for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it'll be a good way to um, just kind of dissect uh, even more games, if you will. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I always find really interesting in um, kind of, you know, as, as a designer, um, and then as somebody who has like kind of followed games critically for so long, um, is, is the opportunity to kind of do that in a group setting again, um, is going to be really fun for me, but I think also could be really interesting, um, you know, topics that we could do of, at, we could probably get two of us to, you know, at least play you yeah. know, one game and, you know, the more people that we have, the, the better opportunity to be able to do that. Um, and then as you said, like some of the other elements, uh, or other types of shows that we could do as well and other type of content that we could do. Um, I used to do a lot of blogging and I've missed that. Um, and you know, just kind of to be able to sit down, uh, to do an audio essay, mm-hmm. um, and to be able to dissect certain things that have, uh, you know, I feel about that happen in the industry or happen in design that, um, you know, I have opinions on, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, from, from things, essays that I've still continued to expand upon that I started back in college to, uh, just other things that have hit me through the years. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another one of the reasons I'm excited to have you as part of the crew now is that, um, you know, I think to varying degrees, each of us has our finger on the pulse of some different aspect of the games industry, Mm -hmm. but I know I'm definitely not nearly as, um, up to date on stuff as mm-hmm. I was during college. Cause that was like, you know, we, we lived and breathed, you know, mm-hmm. video games. Um, and, and I, slight correction, Chris, I, I like to think that I have my, my foot on the throat of certain, <laughs> yeah. certain elements of the game industry. Absolutely. Well said. Well yes. said. <laughs> um, and so like I keep up with, uh, things like tabletop RPGs and, you know, I do have some particular interests, but I, I don't like actively seek out stuff the same way i used to and so i'm always uh, interested whenever you and i talk um about some of the new things you might bring up that i haven't heard about or i know jim also you do a lot of research and you keep up with news and that sort of thing um so i think between the two of you guys kind of being our uh chief um timely research people mm-hmm. in a sense uh just by the way that you guys tend to approach things i think will be good um to kind of keep things fresh on the cast yeah. So you're, you're saying I can't, I, I have to stop bringing in fake news. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Because now I'm going to get called You're going to have a fact it. checker now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. That's, I'm going to bring a lot less so, news now. Wait, is that is that what happened with 121? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just threw out a number. I have no yeah. idea what 121 actually was off the top of my head. No, no, that's 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 great. I, I agree. I think that's it's good to have um, more 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 voices, more people willing to kind of look at it. And I come at it from a different angle too. Mm-hmm. So I love, I love looking at and dissecting, dissecting games. Um, I know I can sometimes be overly negative. That's one of my <laughs> things, but, um, I like that. I like kind of yeah. picking things apart. Um, and I also, even though I'm, I'm quite analytical, I also can get pretty, uh, pretty passionate and talk about some of these things. So it's good to have someone that can, um, also kind of step in and bring, uh, a more analytical approach and not, uh, get too focused on, um, Emotion's not the right word, but passion, mm. you know, like that kind of thing. I, I, I tend to consider myself, I can get a little worked up. <laughs> um, and I think that's, that's, that's good, but we don't want every, we don't, we need different voices and different perspectives. And it's always, it's always good to have those, those sort of conversations from different angles and come mm. at it from different sides. Doc? 
I was just combining my cheese with my uh, fishing pole and getting the mouse oh, to you're come out of the hole. You're playing Bluebird right now. You're playing Bluebird right now. I've seen this over here. <laughs> it's an interesting game, right? It is. It's I, actually I, quite good. I told you. It's, it's surprising. Um, I, I would love to do, uh, while we're talking about this, is uh, throw it out there too and see what people think. I'd love to have a topic in which we do talk about um, the mobile gaming space. Maybe there's an, you know the economy that I mentioned earlier, but also possibly the kind of like where i saw initially steam could have gone where it was a experimental space and i feel like steam has abandoned that and it's become shuffleware space or um lewd game space <laughs> where people because like how, how do you well it's like how do you compete like let's see so you're a and I, i've been thinking about this a lot actually so you have opinions you, on this right you, <laughs> you you put out a game on steam that not a lot of people know about right it's right. not that expensive and you're trying to put it out there and you're, you maybe you don't have enough money to to get them to push it and market it super heavy right but you're like this is a good game um i know it's good so people are going to play it well it's not necessarily true there's no the marketing aspect obviously so how do you compete with with that and people wanting to maybe purchase that as like their kind of um you know impulse buy potentially or they see mm-hmm. it and it's interesting or you know let's say you're like a you know 14 15 year old guy and you're looking for a game like that and you, you go oh this this is kind of interesting then you see over here this other game with this girl who is wearing a skimpy outfit and she's got really big boobies and you're like whoa hey wait a minute you might buy that one you know what i'm saying so i feel like that steam has become way too big into this you know kind of shovelware lewd space that is i feel pulling attention away from uh potentially interesting smaller games the bigger games are never gonna get lost but the smaller games, uh, I feel, are kind of being drowned out. Yeah. Uh, what? How do you feel about that? Especially from as as, as, as an as indie producer, developer, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I completely agree. Um, I think that uh, I I think that the Steam Direct process um, was actually not, and almost I I feel like was never even considered to be a solution to some of the problems that people were seeing with that. Um, and I think that it's actually made it even worse than what the green light system was. Because before, um, of course, you had to go through, you could either pay to just simply get it onto the platform or you went through Steam Greenlight. Um, and, uh, and that was just like a one-time payment of like essentially you, you getting, you know, right. you know, getting on mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you put a game up and then you just simply get votes and it goes through. And of course, a lot of times you still have that same element that you were talking about, Jim, where uh, there are things that catch people's attention, um, you know, and make people want to vote on that instead, or even just simply to even look at the trailer um, in the first place. And so uh, I feel like that was at least a little bit of a better gate and filter than, you know, what Steam Direct is in which it's literally you, you pay, I believe it's like $100 and get get put on the platform. Um, and uh, that and since that has happened you you can see the comparisons to the app market now um and in fact a lot of games that are being put on there are now ports if you even want to call it a port it's uh they hardly even do much to actually even adapt it from the mobile space and they just simply just put it directly on literally unplayable yeah to coin a phrase yeah but i mean as long as there's a way that people can unlock you know achievements and trading cards and stuff like that then there's they know they're still going to at least get their hundred dollars back Hey listeners, future Chris cutting in here for a moment. Unfortunately, we lost a portion of this week's recording, as we did with episode 123. What we then thought was a human error, we now suspect to have been an issue with either our recording software or the laptop we were using it on. We went on to talk for another 10 minutes or so about topics stemming from our discussion on recent trends on Steam, but with apologies, I can't recall any specifics at this point. Once again, we regret that the episode is not whole, but we have since moved to different recording software and started using a new computer, so our hope is that we can avoid having this issue again moving forward. Thank you for your patience. In any case, we did manage to record a few closing remarks, to which we now return. So I think that, uh, you know, we we discussed a lot of topics there. We kind of started that discussion as, uh, you know, the future of the podcast and um, then kind of meandered through a few different other topics of like kind of what we find interesting. I think that what was really neat about that is it kind of reflected a lot of the things that each one of us finds interesting about like games in general. Uh, But then it also reflected even on uh, particular topics, how each one of us kind of approach those topics from uh, different perspectives. Um, So I think that, you know, as kind of bringing it full circle to the very beginning of it, um, you know, when I introduced myself is uh, I'm really excited to hear uh, kind of, 
everybody's kind of different voices and kind of provide another voice on all of these topics as we kind of move forward. And, and what, of course, uh, if you have any ideas for topics mm-hmm. uh, and what you would like to see come uh, to the podcast, please, uh, this is my first time talking to the audience uh, <laughs> directly, but please uh, feel free to, um, to hit us up uh, at the email, which I'm sure Chris will tell mm-hmm. you in a second. Yes. Um, or even like on Twitter, hit us up on Twitter as well. I'm very active on Twitter myself um, as well as other social media, but mm-hmm. um, would love to chat with you about these things away from the podcast and of course bring it to the podcast with any ideas that you have so yeah we've said before and we'll say again and we say it every at the end of every episode um you know from that ap- academic perspective that background that we come from um we really do believe that dialogue makes everyone better and that's why the more voices we can have on the podcast i think the better it is overall we get new perspectives we can use those to temper our own opinions or to have just like new ideas like there, there's the there's an issue that you run into i think where um you can get a little bit too insular in your thinking mm-hmm. um, and it kind of shuts you down to new possibilities and to um, y- even like being able to appreciate new stuff that's coming up potentially because you might not uh, be willing to try something that you might uh, if you might you might if you heard someone else say something good about it or whatever the case might mm-hmm. be. I'm t- I mean, very generalistic right now, but uh, dialogue does make everyone better. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone, for episode 126 of the podcast, our sort of open-ended discussion on where we are with the podcast, where we think we're going, and uh, kind of recent trends in the games industry. I'm Chris. I'm Jim. I'm Eric. And I found the lantern, but I'm not sure what to do next. (laughs) And we'll see you next time. We want you to write into the show, because dialogue makes everyone better. If you want to comment on this episode, ask a question, share some info, voice an opinion, or request a topic, send an email to inbox at backward-compatible.com, and we may feature you on a future episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible. Backward Compatible.